Good morning, Journey Church. Would you stand and worship the Lord with us this morning? Come on. He whispers in my ear, tells me that I'm fearless. He shares a melody, tells me to repeat it. And it makes me whole. It reminds my soul I am more. He says I am. I am more. He says I am. I am more. I am and he says I am his own I was blinded by scales upon my eyes And he came like a light and burned up all my lies. Oh, he set me free. He reminded me I am more. He says I am. I am more. I am, I am more. He says I am, and he says I am his own. Come on, church, we sing this out together. We say, Chains are broken, the scales are on the floor. Truth is spoken, I'm no orphan anymore. Chains are broken, the scales are on the floor. Truth is spoken, I'm no orphan anymore, chains are broken, the scales are on the floor, truth is spoken, I'm no orphan anymore. I am loved, I am new again, I am free, I'm no slave to sin, I'm a saint, oh, and I am righteousness, I'm alive, I'm alive. I'm alive, oh, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive, I'm alive. I am more. He says, I am, I am more. He says, I am, I am more. He says, I am, and he says, I am his own. If you believe it this morning, would you give God a shout of praise? Come on, church. Oh, be yours. 
Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us to worship the Lord this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. God, we come to you this morning. We lift you up knowing that when you come into the room, you change the atmosphere. Knowing that when you come into our life, you change us forever. God, you bring us from death to life. And today you are welcome, welcome to do what you do best. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice, we're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more, we're hanging on every word. Cause when you speak, when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see, when you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we Everything else can wait. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, come now and breathe upon our hearts. Come now and have your way. Cause when you speak and when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see. And what we seek when you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. You move all our fears. When you move, you move us to tears. And when you fall, we fall on our knees. When you fall, we fall at your feet. When you fall, we fall. We fall at your feet When you speak and when you move When you do what only you can do It changes us, it changes what we see And what we see When you come in the room When you do what only you can do it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see.
Hey, you guys can be seated for, for just a moment. And want to welcome you here to Journey Church. And so thankful to have you guys worshiping with us this morning. Uh, look to somebody around you real quick and say, I'm so glad you could be here. Go ahead, tell somebody. So glad that, that you could be here with us. Want to welcome those that are watching online as well. And so glad that you could join in with us. I uh, got a, a, a message a few minutes ago with somebody that was riding down the road and they were listening um, to the online uh, service while they're driving. And so uh, thank you for joining in while you're riding down the road or wherever you are. Uh, we have a, a, an exciting morning uh, plan this morning for our church. A couple of things I want to share with you and we're going to worship through our offering here in a moment. But I want to say thank you for your faithfulness to, to the vision of Journey Church. God's doing a lot of great things in our church. We've seen around 25 people baptized in the past few weeks here in the life of our church. And, and to see life change happen, to see uh, people giving their life to Christ or going public with their faith is such a, an exciting thing to be a part of. And I'm so thankful that God has allowed us to be a part of a church that sees that happen on a regular basis. Can we give God glory for that this morning? That's good that, that we're able to experience that together as a church family. A couple of things I want to bring to your attention. Uh, when you leave today, there'll be some cards that look like this that you can take some with you. Uh, this coming weekend on Saturday night, November the 7th at the YMCA Fields, we're offering an outdoor movie. We've got a movie screen that's bigger than this one uh, that you see behind me. That's an outdoor movie screen. You bring your chairs or your blankets, and we're going to be watching Big Hero uh, 6 there. Uh, for our whole community to come and be a part of. It's free hot chocolate, free popcorn, everything's free. Last year we had a great time uh, in our community. They were asking us, uh, when are we going to do that again? And so this is, we're doing it next weekend. Take some of these cards to your business or to your neighborhood or to, if you coach a sport, you know, to the kids for the rec or the wire, whatever it may be. And be sure to invite them. And we're able to do things like this as a result of God's people coming together and using our resources to be able to do ministry in the community. And so this is one of the things on the back as well. You'll see a parents' night out that's coming up uh, in a month or so. Uh, and this is another opportunity to be able to, to minister to our community, to allow parents to go out on a date while uh, we'll have a ministry team here watching uh, the kids and doing some things with them. From having a pizza, movie, bounce houses, a special a guest appearance from someone that the kids will be excited about with that. So a lot, of, a lot of good things there that you can also minister to the community by offering this to them uh, as, a, as a way to reach out in that. And so through this event and then also if you go to our connections table, something else I just want to share with you, you'll see a water jug out there. Uh, we're doing change for change in, in missions and we're partnering right now with a ministry in Honduras to help build a, a boys home down there for a lady that has uh, several boys in there that they're ministering to and there there's actually a picture of it if you go out there there's a picture you can actually see the home that we're going to be helping build and part of that is we're asking people just on a weekly basis to bring the change out of your car in your pockets and put that in there and, and that's part of the process of helping go towards that in a week or so we'll share more information if you're interested in taking a trip down there to see it and be a part of that as well as we're looking at going to Jamaica uh, in the spring as a part of a mission trip opportunity for our church that those that would like to be a part of that uh, ministry as well to help down there and we'll, we'll share more info. So God's doing a lot of great things in our community, in our church, in our city, in this area as well as across the world and there's some opportunities that he's opened up for us to do and I just want to say thank you for giving and being a part because these are the kind of things that we get to experience and see as a result of our faithfulness and our sacrificial giving and thank you and just a moment I'm gonna pray after I pray you're gonna to get to be a part of witness and baptism again this morning as we celebrate together and in, in, in what God is doing and then we'll rejoice and and continue on with the message this morning so let me pray for us God I thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace that that you give us Lord for the opportunity that you allow for us to be a part of something like this and for choosing a city like Tifton to make an impact in the surrounding area as well as across the world in many ways. And God, thank you for the people that you've brought here to be a part of our family as we continue to grow and reach out. Lord, may we be found faithful with our resources as we give to do great things for your name, not ours, not even for the name of a church but Lord, for your name and for your glory 
And thank you for using Journey to be part of that story and what you're doing. And we rejoice in that this morning as we continue to worship with our giving. May we glorify and honor you in that and all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, I want to take just a moment to introduce to you uh, Mia Catherine McDaniel. I had the opportunity of talking to her last week. Her family's here. They're a part of our church, and uh, we're so thankful for them being here this morning along with their family to be a part of this big event for Mia. She's given her heart to Jesus and surrendered to Him, and she's saved. And she, here she is this morning for her first uh, public profession of faith and telling this church and congregation and the world that she's now a believer in Jesus. And so it's my privilege this morning to baptize me in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ, raised to walk in the newness of life. Amen. I tell you what, that is um, an exciting thing to be able to see people uh, publicly going with their faith and, and being baptized and uh, to, to be a part of that is, is so special. This morning we had baptism in the first service as well and even just a couple of weeks ago I was sharing in the first service um, when we baptized several people that morning and one of them was my oldest. Um, it, you begin to realize how important it is as a father or as a mother, as a parent and the influence you have in your kids as you raise them up. And you don't think about it when you're younger and you don't have kids. Maybe you're just married and you're kind of enjoying going out and, and doing things. And then when God blesses you with, with a family with kids and the importance it is that what you develop in them 
and what you equip them to do in, in the future and how you prepare them. And a lot of that comes from, from how you live your own life. And uh, even in your imperfections and in, in your failures, you can still develop character in your family. And so thankful that God gives us as parents that opportunity uh, to do that. And it's exciting to see kids at that age giving their life to Jesus and going public to, to share with the world what they've done. And so we're always blessed and honored to see that happen in our church and be a part of that and experience that together. This morning we're continuing our series called Permissible Sins. And, and what we've been looking at is is sins that, that we often experience in our life that we give permission to. It, it, it's like we look at the big picture and we say, you know, that's a big deal. They shouldn't have done that, and that's a big sin. But, but what I'm doing, it's not really a big deal. That, that should be acceptable. In fact, I've had three people this week. I was sharing what I was going to talk about this morning, and I had three different individuals that said, you, you really don't have to talk about that if you don't want to. Like, it's okay. We don't have to address this issue. And in fact, one said, you can quit this series at any time and I'll be okay. Like, it's, you can go ahead and stop talking about it. You're, you're meddling in my business, right? I mean, these are things that, that we all struggle with. First, we looked at lying. And many times it goes much, it's, it's, it's the small lies. It's not necessarily that it's the big ones, while in some cases people struggle with that, but it's oftentimes the small things, right? The little white lies that that's not going to hurt anybody, and, and yet the Bible says it's wrong. Or last week, uh, maybe some of you uh, guys in here were nudging your wives, right? You know, gossip, we talked about gossip, and maybe some of you you know, uh, we're like, I told you you shouldn't be saying that or whatever that may look like. And, and, and some of you ladies might be bruised up a little bit. So this morning, I want to give you the opportunity to bruise your husband up a little bit. So uh, we're going to talk about a different issue that maybe some of you gentlemen in here struggle with as well as ladies. Because I, I know dudes that struggle with gossip too, okay? So it's not a one-sided street. Uh, but I think this morning is something that we can all relate to in the room in, in one way or another. But before I get to that, let's look at Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. It's kind of the heartbeat of this series. It, it all revolves around this text, right? Search me, O God, and know my what? Know my heart. God, would you know my heart? Because we know that our heart is deceitful. And, and it can lead us to do wrong things. And so anytime I hear someone say, you just need to follow your heart, I cringe and I'm like, no, you don't need to follow your heart because your heart can lead you down the wrong road. What, what I've learned is you have to lead your heart. You have to lead your heart to the right things. Because our heart in and of itself, the scripture says, is deceitful. And if we're not careful, it can deceive us into doing things that we think is right. But yet, in reality, it's wrong. We think that it's, we give permission to it, but in fact, it's not good. For us, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me. Most of us in the room, God, don't test me. I don't want to go through another trial, right? Lord, test me though, and, and know my thoughts. Like, know what I'm thinking. I want it to be purified because here's the deal because what's in our mind and what's in our heart eventually will become our words. Eventually, sooner or later, your words we know will become your actions, and then your actions end up into habits or a lifestyle or a destination in which you end up somewhere. And, and so therefore, we need to guard our heart. Lord, search my heart and see if there's any wicked thoughts, anything that shouldn't be there. And we move on into verse 24, and he says, point out, like, like go more than just search when you see it. Point out anything in me that offends you. Like, point it out to me so I can see it. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. Like, lead me on the path that I need to be on, not the path that I want to take in my flesh, not the path that I want to take in my heart, there again, but I need to be led. I need my heart to be led, to, to lead my heart, to lead my life in the path of, of everlasting life. Not just what I want, but what does God want to do in and through me. And so this morning, the permissible sin that we're going to look at, that many times we give permission to and we say, I was, I, this is just the way that I am. This is, this is who God's made me to be and you need to deal with it. That sort of thing. And we give permission to it when that's not necessarily the case, and we're going to address that issue this morning. And so the permissible sin that we're going to look at is anger and how anger affects us, it, how, how it messes with our family, 
It messes with our relationships. It messes with our heart. It, it, it messes up our relationship and how we view God and how we view people and, and, and many different things in, in our life and it all revolves around anger. And for many of us in the room, perhaps we say, well, this is just who I am. Uh, you know, and, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But what I want you to see is this, is feeling upset about something I don't necessarily believe is where the sin occurs with anger. I, I don't know that just feeling upset is, is where it occurs. I think it's our response to anger. It's how we respond to the anger that we're feeling when something happens. It's, it's I respond, either we can respond the right way or we can respond the wrong way. And that, I believe that's where it begins to determine whether or not it's sin in which what we're dealing with or what's going on in our life. And so there's a right way and a wrong way. I don't know necessarily that it's the feelings, but it's what you do and how you will respond when you feel that way that leads to one or the other. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27, you look on the screen with me, we'll be looking at a lot of verses. You won't have time to turn there in every one of them. So, but I want to give you time to be able to write these down because these will be something that you can chew on later in the week and your personal quiet time. But the scripture says this, in your what? Say it with me. In your anger, do not. Okay, that lets me know immediately. Okay, so not necessarily anger is the sin, right? In your anger, do not sin. Uh, okay, so my anger is not. Well, how do I know if it's sin? How do I know if I've sinned in my anger? That's what we're going to address this morning. Do not let the sun go down while you are still what? angry. So in a relationship with your spouse or with your kids, it's important that, that you deal with the issue, whatever it is. But, you know, before, before you go to bed, don't, don't let it settle in your heart and stir to where you wake up the next morning and it's still there brewing. You need to, you need to work it out. Don't go to bed angry. You know, with your kids, you know, maybe we get in an argument with our kids or our spouse and we just go to bed and we're like, I'm done with this and whatever it may be, and it's still brewing. It's not, it's not been healed yet. It's not been dealt with. He says, don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. In other words, you need to, we need to fix the problem now and, and get it out. And then he goes on and says this, and do not give the devil a what? A foothold, not to give the devil a foothold. Let me give you that term there, foothold, in the Greek, if you were to go through it and, and look at what that actually means. When you look at the word foothold, it actually means a location, a place. Don't give the devil a place. In other words, don't give the devil a guest room in your heart, a place to camp out. And many times with anger, we, we open up a guest room, we open up a place for it to settle in and we give him a foothold in our life. And the scripture says not to give the devil a foothold, not to give him a place in, in your life. It's important to, to guard against that and in your anger not to sin. And, and in the Old Testament, there's a scripture, these two brothers that were, that were there and anger leads one of them in the wrong direction. And, and what we know is Abel made the good offering and, and God accepted it, but yet with Cain, he did not make a good offering. And as a result, God rejects Cain's offering. And Cain is struggling with that. And in Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, here's the response. Look with me. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you what? Why are you angry? Like, okay, well, what's going on? Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? Next verse. It goes on and says, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? In other words, if you respond properly, will you not be accepted you know, in this? But if you do not do what is right, if you respond the wrong way, if you do what's wrong, I want you to see this. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to what? It desires to what? To have you. But you must, what? Rule over it. I want you to see this picture for a moment. This is exactly how Satan operates. Sin is crouching at your door. You get this picture of a, a lion or a tiger that's preparing to, to attack its prey and it's down in the, the high grass and it's laying there and it's waiting on the proper time and it's crouched down. And 
when that moment happens, that, that tiger or, or a lion, they know that they're going to have it. They know that they're going to be able to devour it. They know that they're going to be able to catch it because of the location and the point in which they're waiting. This is exactly where Satan works. And the scripture says that sin is crouching at your door. So if you could picture that for just a moment, Satan is crouching at your door and he waits quietly for the moment to happen for your family, your relationship with your spouse. He's crouching at the door of your kids and the choices that they're making. He's waiting on the opportunity to have them, to attack them. The Bible says that he comes to, to steal, kill, and destroy. And I want you to see this picture because many times these sins that we're talking about, these permissible sins that we give permission to, are many ways in how Satan has, has, is devouring our family or attacking us and we don't even realize it because it's something that we think we're okay with. And that's exactly where Satan wants us to be. And we think that we have a handle when in reality he's crouching at the door and, and he's looking to devour us or our children or our family or whatever it may be. And, and anger is just one of those ways that gives him a foothold or a guest room to enter in and, and to uh, attack us or our family. And so we have to guard against that. So just for a moment this morning, I want to give you two wrong ways that we handle anger. And I'm pretty confident that I could say every one of us in the room are one of these two people. It's just in, in, in how we deal with it when we do get angry in a sinful way. And, and we'll address that together. Wrong ways in which we handle our anger. And number one is this. There's those people that express their anger. We've, we've looked at this before uh, a few years ago when we were, we were going through James, I believe, and talking about guarding our tongue and guarding our mouth and what we say. But there are those that have a tendency to express their anger. And, and, and express is really a kind word there. It, it could be more like using another verb like explode or erupt like those that explode their anger or they just erupt in anger uh, towards their, their family or, or friends or people or whoever's around and it's like a bomb that shatters and when it goes out it just it affects everyone in the room, everyone that's nearby and shatters and it spreads all around in the room. There's those people that express their anger or they are willing to just let it rip and say this is who I am and this is just the way I'm wired and you're going to have to deal with it type mentality when in fact we know that that's, that's a learned behavior. And we'll, and we'll address that we'll address that in a minute. But Solomon wrote this in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11 in the New Living Translation. Here's what he says. He says, fools will vent their anger. Those that vent their anger and express it out in public, he says they're fools. Because, and he says, but this, he says, but the wise quietly hold it back. Not to... To, to vent out to everyone, but, but to hold that bomb back from shattering and, and throwing words that damage many people in, in the room or around. Um, Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 17, here's another verse for you. A quick-tempered quick person does what? Foolish things. How many would confess this morning and say, I've done some foolish things in my life? Go ahead. Right, raise your hand. We're, we're all there. Um, we, we've all made mistakes. But someone who is quick-tempered says there's a person who ends up doing foolish things in their life as a result of it because they're one that tends to express their anger or to erupt or explode and, 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 and affect everyone in and around them. And this is not a good way to handle anger. It, it's not. Let me ask a question, and, and I'm going to get to the other group in just a second in talking about this, but how many in the room would be willing to confess this morning and say, when I sin in my anger, many times I'm one that expresses it. Just raise your hand. That's okay. We had a lot of people raise their hand first. All right. there's, there's many of us in here, right, that have a tendency, we, we express it. We just, we, we're going to verbally tell you what we think immediately. 
and, and express it. And that's not a proper way. It, it, it can end up, when you do that, it can end up being a sinful way in which we handle the anger that, that we struggle with. But number two is this. I want to give you this. The two wrong ways. One is those that, that express it. But number two is this. There are those that suppress. Those that hold it in. Those that, that, that struggle with, with sharing that and they keep it all built up in, in, in their heart. Psalms 32 verse 3 says this, when I kept silent, my bones what? Wasted away. It is not good physically and it's not good spiritually when you hold things into yourself. My bones wasted away through my, through my groaning all day long. It is not good to suppress things and keep them and allow them to build up because over time eventually many times or if not most of the time eventually there's a grenade that's going to go off and it's all going to come out at one time and many times it can even be bigger than the one who expresses it on a regular basis and, and we must guard ourselves uh, against that but here's the reality let me ask you a question real quick how many of you would say you're more of a suppressor you keep it to yourself go ahead Many of us keep it to ourselves, right? And, and, and we, we, don't, we don't express a lot. Here, here's the reality. You, you are having the same knockdown drag outs that the expressor is having. The only difference is you're having it with yourself. And you rehearse the conversation over and over in your mind. Every detail of how you're angry and your emotions are stirring, but yet you're doing it internally. And, and, and struggling with it in your own heart and in your own life and you suppress it and you keep it in. There's a good story in, in chapter Luke, uh, verse, or in uh, Luke, the, the Bible, uh, Luke in chapter 15. And, and in, I, we'll look at verse 28 in a moment, but there's a good story there in the gospel of Luke that the prodigal son, it's, it's one of the most popular stories that we hear about in scripture that people know or have heard that story and right, and we've shared that story many times. But but basically, the, the son has went off. He's spent all his money that was he was given early as an inheritance because he wanted that. He comes back, and the father accepts him back in, throws a big party for him. And the brother's upset about it because he's like, "Man, my dad's never done this for me, and yet this guy's lived in sin. He's wasted money away, and yet dad does this for him." And in Luke chapter 15, I want you to see this in verse 28. The scripture says the older brother became what became angry and he refused to go in. In other words, he was a suppressor. He was mad, he kept it to himself, and he just decided that I'm not going to go into the party because I'm mad, but I'm not going to cause a big scene. The expressor would be one in the middle of the party going, can I have everybody's attention? Like, I'm going to tell you what I think about this. Some of you are in the room going, that's me, right? Others were going, no, nah, I'm going to sit outside and just keep it to myself. Both are wrong. Both are sin. Both are not permissible. So the question is this. You're saying, I'm really confused right now because you just told me that I can't tell people how I feel, but yet I can't keep it to myself either. Like, what do I do with it, right? I mean, that's weird. Like, if you're telling me I can't express it, and yet, you know, I, I, I can't keep it in, like, where do I take it to? Like, where, where do I need to, to put it? And so the, the question you're probably asking is, then, what do we do with our anger? That's a very good question, and for just a few moments here, I want to be able to address that, that, that with us, because what, what anger, what you, what you don't realize, is, is, is it affects you either way if you're a suppressor or an expressor, according to Scripture. Either way, it's going to mess you up. If you're one that suppresses it, right, it's going to affect you first and destroy you from the inside, and eventually it will begin to destroy everyone around you and hurt them. Whether you're an expressor, you begin to hurt everybody else first, not thinking, and then it ends up haunting you and coming back to mess with you. Both are sin, both are wrong. What do we do with our anger? What we know about anger is this from Scripture. In fact, around 15 times through the Bible, the, the Scripture teaches us and gives the metaphor that, that anger is a lot like fire. 
In fact, we find that in Scripture, the relationship between the two are given. It makes references with the two. And anger and fire are one in the same. So if that's true, then let's take just a moment and look at fire. What does fire do? There's a few things. Um, it boils our water. It cooks our food. Right? What else? It, it heats our homes. It keeps us warm. If we live in a place that's extremely a, a cold environment, it keeps you alive. And so, therefore, fire is essential. It's needed. But along with it being essential, it can be destructive. A fire can burn down your home. A fire can be set in the woods and it can expand and destroy thousands of acreage. A fire can burn someone and it hurts. It can kill someone. A fire can be very dangerous. So in one moment, a fire is essential for life. It's essential part of, of, of we use it on a daily basis, but in another moment, a fire can be very destructive. And anger is the same way. It can both be productive and it can be destructive. And it can destroy. And that's where I want us to camp out for a few moments to address. It goes deeper than just talking about am I an expressor or a suppressor? Do I keep it in or do I, do I throw it all out and just let every, you know, what, where am I at with that? Because scripture, there's plenty of scripture that, that tell, talks about those issues. But I think we need to go deeper with it. I think there's different types of anger. And there's two that, that I want us to look at for just a moment. And number one is this. I want us to look at an anger that is sinful. And if it's an anger that is sinful, it should be put out. It's a fire that needs to be put out. Look to the person beside you and tell them you need to put it out. Go ahead, tell them. You need to, you need to put them out. That's the, the moment where you can give somebody the elbow jab. You need to put it out. Like, right, you need to, to get over it and, and put it out. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 14. Look at the scripture with me. It says, starting a quarrel is like breaching a dam. So drop the matter. There, again, put it out. Drop the matter before a dispute breaks out. Like, like let it go, right? Just, you need to, to drop it. Whatever it is, you need, you need to put it out. If it's a sinful anger, if it's anger that is sinful, it should be uh, put out. And for some of us, and, uh, and I've, I've, I hear this all the time, well, this is just the way that I am. God made me this way. You need to deal with it. That's not true. That is not true. It's a learned behavior, whether you learn from your parents, you learn from somebody, and you've developed it as a part of your life, but it is not, it is not the way that God wired you. It is a learned behavior. Let me give you an example, right? Husband and wife's duking it out, like, you know, the anger is released, and man, he or she's going off on the other. I can't believe you would do this, right? And then your best buddy calls that you're going to play golf with or fishing, and you answer, I mean, you, I mean you're right in the middle of it, and the phone rings, and you're at the top of your voice, and then you're like, he goes, hello? Hey, dude, what's up, man? Like, yeah, I'm, you, know, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like all of a sudden, it's just like cuts off, or some, it's the pastor from church, you know, cut it, and then you drop it off, you're like, hey, Pastor Benji, man, we're, we're going great, everything's good, and you were just in the middle of duking, it's a learned behavior that you learn to control. Scripture teaches us that it's something that, that you can control, and it's something that, that you, you struggle with. It is a learned behavior, and one of the things that's always helped me with, with this and, and I think it would be good for you to see it from this perspective is what if the next time we get angry whether you're driving in traffic and you're ticked off because somebody pulled in front of you and you want to tell them that they're number one or whatever it may be right you're wanting to respond in a fleshly way physically or verbally whatever that may be and instead of responding in that way you think for a moment and say I wonder what's going on in their life where are they headed? They could have just got fired from their job. They may be headed to the hospital. We don't know the other part of the story. 
And this is where sinful anger comes in. And, and this is not 100% an always fact. But most of the time, what I learned, have learned in my life is this. Most sinful anger comes when it's dealing with something that's directly related to my life. Not to somebody else, but when you cut me off in traffic. You've prevented me and made me even later when I should have left early to begin with, right? Or, or you've said something that's going to hurt my image in the community or, or it's something that's going to, to affect my family or people are going to say this or say, whatever it may be. That's when sinful anger comes out is when many times is when it's directly related to the, the individual or to me. And, and I think for many times, instead of taking the attention on me and we place the attention back on the other person, and say, begin to say things, I wonder what's going on in their heart for them to say something evil like that. I wonder what they're avoiding in their life that they're, that they're struggling with. And, and realizing it for what it is. And, and whether you're a, a, an expressor or a suppressor, you're going off whether it's internally or externally. And it's going to mess with you every way you look at it. And there's a scripture in James chapter 1 verse 19 through 20 this is where I talked about you know a couple of years ago we actually went through the book of James but look at this verse with me everyone should be quick to what to listen to evaluate to pay attention to detail and slow to what speak and slow to become what angry not that, you know, people, we're going to get angry at things. Scripture teaches it's going to happen. Anger is going to show up. But, but quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Look at the next verse. Now, here's where I want you to see this. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Human anger, meaning anger that deals with me. Human anger, anger that deals with our flesh. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that, that God desires. In fact, seven books in the Bible talk about how the Bible says that God is slow to anger. And, and that, that, that he doesn't, it's not, it, Scripture doesn't say God doesn't get angry, but it says he's slow to anger. And I think it's the same way he's wired us to be slow, to quick to, to, to listen and, and slow to speak and allow God to speak in and through our lives and to see the situation. But human anger does not produce righteousness that God desires. Look to somebody and tell them it's not good. Go ahead, tell them it's not good. It's not. You need to put it out. Get the attention off yourself and put it out. And realize it's not good. It's, it's sinful anger when it's dealing with the human desires or with our flesh and ourselves. But number two is this. There's an anger that is righteous. And it should be fanned. And I think a lot of times we, even as Christians, miss out on this. We get so caught up in the anger of what someone says about us or what someone's doing to us or how we were overlooked for something. Whatever it may be, all about me, 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 me. And we get anger and either it suppresses or either we express it. And we, either way, it's sinful. But I think according to Scripture, I see it that there is an anger that is righteous and it should be fanned. I, I was trying to think of a, a, a better word than even with fanned, but uh, to be blown on or to, to be waved, to be fanned, it's like a flame that you want to keep and you want to make it bigger and you fan it to, to, to spread it. Anger that is righteous needs to be spread. It needs to be it's spoken. It needs to be brought out. And, and what anger that is righteous is this it's anger when we see things that are happening in our community and we see people that are hurting or we see kids that don't have homes to go to or a mother or father to, to look out after them or to raise them or we, we see the, the poor and those that are hurting or we see someone whose marriage is on the verge of divorce and the kids are broken in it and we see how the Satan is crouching at the door and he's waiting on the time to attack and we see it from the outside but yet many times we keep silent and we watch it and we say well at least it's not me they need to deal with it and we keep it all focused on me 
or our family or our place. When the Bible says that that type of anger needs, that righteous anger, it needs to be brought out, it needs to be fanned, that fire needs to be spread. That people are dying and they're being eternally separated from a holy God. And Satan's doing everything he can to destroy as many families and kids as he can. And that should anger us to do something about it. An anger that is righteous, that we want to see people come to know Christ. We want to see people restored in their relationships. We want to people see people rescued out of their sin and their bondage and their mess and to know that there's hope and know that there's a future in Jesus. That's the anger that scripture teaches us is, is a good anger. In fact, in Mark chapter 3, verse 5, the Pharisees are trying to accuse Jesus of, they're trying to find something that they can accuse him of being guilty of, and one of them is working on the Sabbath day, and they're like, we're going to catch him here with this. And in Mark chapter 3, verse 5, in the NIV version, Scripture says that he looked around. This is Jesus. Jesus looked around at them in what? In anger. And deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts. He said to the man, stretch out your hand and he stretched it out and his hand was completely restored and I think as we we look into our community there's so many ways that we can make an impact with the gospel whether we're doing a movie night out on the lawn at the YMCA or whether we're taking a mission trip to to, to Honduras or to Jamaica, wherever it may be, and reaching out to kids that are in an orphanage or, or in a boy's home or wherever it may be, that, that, that God gives us those opportunities and that anger should stir when we see people who are hurting and who are broken, who Satan is doing everything he can to devour. That's the type of anger I think that needs to be fanned as we as believers say, we're not going to let this happen in our home. We're not going to let this happen in our church. We're not going to let this happen in our community. And we're going to do everything we can to take the gospel and have, let people hear the hope that they can have in Jesus. And to get off of that, that roller coaster that you're on of thinking that it's all about you and your emotions and your anger because somebody hurt you with what they said or you know, somebody pulled in front of you. And, and whatever, it, whatever it may be, there's, there, there's a deeper issue that's there. And you need to put that out so you can be set free from that with every head bowed and every eye closed here this morning. Scripture says that Jesus come to set us free. He, he, he's made a way for you to have a relationship with God, to, to have freedom in your walk with Him by walking in truth. And some of you may have came this morning and you had no idea that this was going to happen, but, but as a result this morning, through the worship and through the word and through the Holy Spirit convicting your heart this morning. Maybe the Holy Spirit's working in your heart and you know that there's a decision that you need to make this morning to surrender your life to Jesus and let him be the forgiver of your sins and to confess him as Lord. And the Bible says if you'll do that, that you can be a new person. You can have a new life. And just like we experienced baptism earlier, you can, your old self can be buried and raised to walk in a new life. I can't help but think that there's people in here that are desperate for a new life. You're desperate for hope. And you're ready to walk out of here in a new way. And the Bible says if you call on the name of Jesus and repent of your sins and you ask him to forgive you of your sins and confess him as Lord and believe in what he did on the cross and he rose again on the third day and he's at the right hand side of the Father now on our behalf, he's listening. And you can call out to him and he'll save you with every head bowed and eye closed. If that's you and you say, Pastor Benji, I want to give my life to Jesus. I feel like the Holy Spirit's convicted. There's conviction in my heart and I know it's what I need to do. And I'm ready to take that step out onto the water to meet Jesus this morning. I want to meet him and I want to walk out of here new. With every head bowed, if that's you on the count of three, just simply raise your hand. One, two, three. You go ahead and raise your hand. Now I want to be able to pray for you. Thank you for raising your hand. I see your hand in the back. Thank you. I see your hand. 
over here to the side. I see your hand too. Thank you for raising your hand. Any others? I don't want to miss you. Amen. Would there be others of us in here as well that would confess, I am a believer, I've given my life to Christ, but, but I struggle with the permissible sin of, of anger that I've allowed it to be okay. I've allowed it to be okay in the way that I talk to my kids. I've allowed it to be okay in the way that I talk to my spouse. I've allowed it to be okay in the way I talk to others. Or I've allowed it to be okay to deal with it myself and suppress it and not put it out. And, and I, need, I, I need to be set free from that this morning. If that's you, no one looking around, would you just as an act of surrender to God say, God, I want to give you this. Would you take it from me this morning? I want to surrender it to you. I want to put it out with the fire, with the, with the water. I want, to, I want to put that fire out of my life. I want to walk in your ways. If that would be you, go ahead, just raise your hand. Say, that's me. Thank you. Hands are everywhere. Thank you for being honest this morning with that. Father, I pray for, for those that's got their hand up right now, Lord, that you would help them and restore them, um, Lord, for maybe the grenades that's already been thrown out and things that's been said in the past, Lord, would you forgive them for that? Help them to walk in your ways and in your word and be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. And, and, and Lord, be set free from those things that they're struggling with, whether they express it or they suppress it. God, would you help them to be set free and to put it out? And Lord, would you help us as a church to stir that righteous anger as we look in our community to stir our hearts, God, for the broken and for the disconnected. And God, that we would have a desire to bring them into your house to, to experience you. Would we have a desire to bring them to events and things that we do? Have a desire to reach out and to love them where they're hurting and not just sit back and be thankful that it's not us, but God, be broken over the fact that it's happening to somebody. And, and God, that we would work through that to minister to them at work or in the community or wherever it is, and that you would use us to do that, God. And we thank you for what you're going to do. And Lord, we celebrate for the salvations that's happened this morning. And we give you the glory for those that have been set free and they're going to walk out of here different than they walked in, Lord, as you've given them new life. And we thank you for that. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, as we stand to our feet, several hands went up. Can we? That's a big deal that we give God the glory for what he's doing in the life of our church. But 
I am yours You are mine You are mine oh. Spirit, leave me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deep within my feet, could ever wonder. And my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deep within my feet, could ever wonder. My faith will be made stronger than the presence of my Savior. My trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior My Savior oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. oh, Jesus My Just a moment. There's a couple of things I want to share with you this morning before we leave. Um, one is this: is we have these things called uh, Connect cards, and if you're a first-time or second-time guest, or if you've given your life to Christ, or you're ready to take that next step and be baptized, please take a moment to fill this out. If if any of those things are you, we want to connect with you and help you in any way. If you have questions, we want to be able to answer those questions about our church. We have these baskets that are by the doors on your way out, and you can drop those in. If you're interested in serving, there's plenty of opportunities to serve 
fill that out and place those in the basket on your way out. And I know they're kind of hard to ride on. We realize that the material that these cards have been made out of, you have to press down a little bit. So we're uh, going to be getting some more cards like this with a little bit different material that's easier to ride on for you to be able to fill out and, and to turn in. So be sure to do that before you leave today. Uh, so we can connect and, and any questions that you may have and be sure to check out the, the table out there with the, the picture that's out there with the home in Honduras and, and how we're partnering with that and you'll see information there. And you're going to be handed these by our ushers on your way out. Grab a few of them, uh, hand them to people in your neighborhood or at work or with your friends. There again, if you're involved in any sports with the rec or why, great opportunity, hand out to the kids. While, while you're out there. Um, we'll be doing some of that this week, inviting everyone to this coming Saturday out at the YMCA field. So come be a part of that. Bring a chair or a blanket to lay out on the, the field and be able to spend time with your family. Great opportunity and to even invite others to come and be a part of that with you that may not come to church, but they may come there and as a result, come with you here the next morning. So be sure to, to do that. Uh, and, and get those on your way out. For just a moment, uh, Pastor Austin wants to share some things, some exciting news about what God's doing in his heart and wants to be able to share that with the church. So let's take just a moment to hear that. Well, hey, Journey Church. I'm excited to be talk to, talking to you guys today. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on in, in our family's life. One really exciting thing that we want to announce to our church is that I'm signing a record deal, um, which I'm really, really excited about. Thank you guys so much. And... Uh, Man, it's really, really exciting. Um, you guys have been uh, supporting um, us and our ministry for a long time. Um, let me go to L.A. for three months last year and be on, on, on TV, and you supported, you voted, and, um, and you've put up with me and, and, and me and my wife for, th for three years. This guy right here was crazy, and he asked me when I was 18 years old to be the worship pastor uh, at Journey, and, and I accepted, and, and I've grown so much here. Um, the thing with the label, with, with uh, re re signing a record deal, one thing that is exciting, uh, but also kind of sad, but uh, we wanted to let you guys know and, and tell you from, from our hearts that we're super grateful for everything the Journey Church has done for us, uh, but God has called me and my wife uh, to move to Delray Beach, Florida, um, where our record label is at, and um, we are going to be leaving Journey Church on uh, December 27th. Um, that'll be our last Sunday here, and then we are moving to Delray Beach, Florida. Um, a couple of things, reasons why. One is that we feel like God has called us there. Um, we've been praying about this. Me and Pastor Benji have been praying about this for a while, um, knowing that God is kind of pushing our, the music career uh, aspect of our life in, in a fast motion um, and closer towards this. And um, my wife wants to be a dental hygienist, and there is a dental school in Delray Beach, Florida, um, and it's something that we both feel like it's the right next step for us to take and uh, we're very very sad to leave our family um, and you are our family um, and, and it's crazy three years spending here we've grown a lot I've grown into the husband the man uh, the, the, the friend everything that I am today um, is mostly because of Journey Church and what God has used Journey Church to grow us as and um, in, into today so we're excited uh, but we wanted to announce it to you guys today that, uh, that we are going to be leaving in, uh, in, at the end of December to move down to Delray Beach, Florida. And uh, we're excited, but we also are very, very sad. Good deal. Well, share just a little bit. I know one of the things that we've talked about is, is there's an airport nearby. And yes. That so as an artist, you know, as a contemporary Christian artist, I'm out on the road a lot, especially when we release our record in August. I'll be traveling a lot, um, be going to Nashville a good bit, but also we'll be on tour all over the U.S. And, um, and so having an airport nearby is very important for us so that I can fly home at any time and be with my wife if she needs me. And also we want to make sure that we can stay um, connected to a local church, and there at in in sorry, I almost forgot this part. Um, um, down in in Delray Beach, Florida, um, there is a church called the Avenue Church, uh, and God has called us to be a part of that church. And um, it's a four years old four year old ch church plant. Um, or five years old, actually five years old, um, church plant, and they've never really had a worship ministry before. 
And, and so God has called us to go in and um, develop a, a worship atmosphere a lot like what we've done here at Journey Church and um, build musicians, build uh, uh, church groups and, and worship groups up. They want to plant five churches in five years. And, um, and so we feel like God can use us to be a part of, of equipping leaders there and um, being able to serve on staff there as the worship pastor as well. Good deal. And, and we've been praying about this for some time. We've kind of known about it. Uh, when the record label started coming up and I know that the record label the the people that are behind that also go to this church and so it's something that we've been praying about for for some time and 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 we know that God's in it and what I was telling our first service if God's in it then everything that comes out of it's going to be good which is a good thing and so we know that where God's taking them is going to be an exciting time for them and you know how to pray for them is is awesome to be traveling a lot uh, and, and speaking of that, very quickly, um, share with them what it lo- would you sign on the label, what that looks like for you in, in the future with what that, what's going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be traveling, or I'll be traveling. I'm not sure. She'll be in school. She'll be coming with me all the time. But I'll be home with Waffles. <laughs> she'll be home with our little dog, Waffles. A lot of responsibility there. And, uh, <laughs> and you guys all thought we were pregnant, but we're not. We're just moving. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so... Gotcha. I was going to walk on stage, like, hold my belly, and Austin's like, no. Don't do that. <laughs> Not the right time. Um, but, but for making a record, we'll, we'll be making it from in eight to nine months. Um, we'll be making the record. I'll be traveling to Nashville once or twice a month. And then once that happens, we'll be going on tour after, uh, after the record comes out with hopefully some bigger acts like Francesca Battistelli is one and Josh Wilson is another, um, and going on tour all over the U.S. So uh, just supporting the record. Good deal. Well, that lets you know how to be praying for um, Austin as they prepare to make that transition over the next few months, and then also to know how to pray as we begin to pray for that next season as a church as well, and, and where we're headed as, as a church. And then the next couple of weeks, another thing uh, that's exciting, as we've been working on for several months, is a CD, and we've got one song left to finalize, and then once that one song's finalized, we'll have a CD that's been produced that we'll be able to have here for you guys to be able to have, and it'll be our very first Journey Church CD with our own original music on it, and so we'll celebrate that in a few weeks. Uh, and, and give God glory for what he's doing in and through that, but also in and through uh, Austin and Jocelyn's life as they prepare to make that transition and in for us as well. And so when God's in it, it's good, and it's good for them and where they're headed in the future. And you can be connected and kind of follow along, and I'm sure we'll be doing that as well because your family's here, and so his sister's still leading worship here. and part of, So they're all connected in our church, and so we'll still see him around from time to time, I'm sure. But you'll know how to pray for him. Um, if you guys would, if y'all make y'all's way to the, to the back, that way you guys can talk to them and have any questions for them about what they're going to be doing. Uh, even this week, I think you're headed to Nashville. Is that right? Uh, tomorrow. And so that, that, that kind of journey is starting for him where he'll be spending a lot of time in Nashville and traveling back and forth. And he'll be close to an airport to be able to fly. Uh, and so that's going to be part of benefiting their family. And uh, we're going to miss them. And, and so thankful for their time here, but we also know that God has got us on a journey here and where he'll be taking us in the days to come. And so you guys can be praying through that. We love y'all. Spend time with your family. Thank you for being here. Uh, go home and spend time with your family this afternoon. And listen, even though the dog's lost, okay, it's still a new day, right? So you guys go. And uh, we love y'all. And we'll see you next week. Don't forget to get some of these cards and pass them out to your family and friends. Sky